On the trail radio here, going to be showing you how to program the UV5R without chirp. To start, you're going to want to turn the volume knob Channel mode. so that it turns on. From there, you can go straight to VFO slash memory mode. Frequency mode. While you are in frequency mode, you can put in anything as you please that fits within the UHF VHF boundaries. So let's say I wanted to put in a ham frequency of one, one, four, 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 four. So we got the ham frequency. And let's just say that's all I wanted to transmit on. What I would do is go to the menu and I would scroll down until I see how to save it on the memory. So on channel 27 or option 27, memory channel. you click the memory channel and you keep scrolling until you find an empty channel. You can tell it's an empty channel because it'll take away the CH on there. CH, empty. From there, you can Receiving memory. hold the memory channel, or hit the menu button, and it will hold that memory channel on channel 95. So now, channel mode. if I went back to channel mode on 95, I now have 144.445 on the UV5R. It is now receiving on there with no CTCS transmit or receive tones. Now, what if you wanted to talk to a ham repeater? Well, you would simply go back to frequency mode. Frequency mode. Let's say you were still using 144.445. Going to go to your menu. Menu. And we'll go to menu option 11. That'll be your receive CTCSS. Now for all intents and purposes, let's just go ahead and say that the receive tone is going to be 123. Menu. CTCSS. As it is a very Confirm. common tone for amateur repeaters. And for your transmit tone, CTCSS. most of the time, unless listed otherwise, it will be listed Confirm. in the same way. So now you have your transmit tone on option 13 the same as your receive ctcss this basically makes it to where you can access the repeater after you have your offset and the receive tone makes it to where you can hear what they're putting out and nobody else unless they are also using that tone so now that you have your ctcss tones you're going to want to go to menu menu and on option 26 you will find the offset now 5 megahertz is very common for those who are in the ultra high frequency range Menu. but since we are talking about a offset very frequency. high frequency zero, 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 six, zero, zero. Confirm. that is more commonly associated with the very high frequency offsets you would have a offset of 0.5 six from there menu you're going to want to do a shift direction on option 25 frequency direction and what that does is either puts it in a positive or a negative direction that being because if i was to transmit this would no longer be 144.445, it would be plus or minus six. It being so close to the 144, it is going to be a plus. So it'll end up being 145.045 megahertz. Menu, frequency direction, confirm. So now you have it able to talk to a repeater no other help. 
from that point, menu. just go on to memory channel. Memory channel. Well, let's just assume it was back at 95 because I already deleted that one. Receiving memory. Now, if I go back to channel mode, channel mode you will see a couple of things. You will see the channel 95 is right there. The tone or the frequency that I have listed right there. Uh, CT right there says that we are receiving on a CT CSS tone. So it's going to block out and filter the rest of the noise other than what is coming through on that tone on this frequency. And then you have S for simplex. And then you have the plus and minus sign. What that is saying is that there is an offset for this frequency. And that is practically everything there is to it. I mean, there's a few more bumps here and there with squelch and a few other things like that. But other than that, you have a programmed ham radio. Uh, it's roughly the same thing when it comes to the UV5G, but because this one is purely on the ultra high frequency, you're only going to be doing positive five offsets for talking to repeaters. Other than that, that's all there really is to know about programming one of these ham radios, unless you want to go a little bit deeper into it with squelch or uh, push to talk IDs and anything else like that. A quick reminder of the options will show us that squelch is your squelch. This is your step. It's something that you're not entirely going to need. I just keep it set to 12.5. Your transmit power. I have it set to high. Your transmit power should probably also be set to high. I believe that is a difference between 2 to 4 watts. Um, if you're trying to squeeze out every little bit of distance that you can, you're going to want it set to high. It will drain your battery faster though. Vox, we practically never use on these things. It can either be way too sensitive or not sensitive enough. This is your band, either wide band or narrow band. Always keep it set to wide. And that's about all you realistically need to need to talk to all the other ham operators in your area. The only thing to keep in mind is that there is also DCS tones and CTCS tones. So if you are unaware of how those work, I would venture clicking onto another one of these videos talking about the difference between the two, how they can help you, and other things like that.